Hi guys and welcome back to Scribe Gaming. We've just had the kit reveals for the new Mandalorian characters and I think we better take a look. First up, it's Cara Dune. Let's get into it. Alright guys, I've got to be honest, I was really happy when I saw that Cara Dune was being dropped into this game. And it's not just because her character is a consummate badass in the show, but from everything we could see in the reveal poster in the background, it appears that CG is finally letting theory crafting come back into this game just a little bit. Check out those tags. Lightside, Rebel, Scoundrel, and Tank. Now that's already a lot of diversity, but it gets so much better when we take a look at her actual abilities. Okay, so her basic immediately shows that you can either run her as a pesky taunter under rebels or a damage dealer under scoundrels. While under a rebel lead, she's going to be taunting for two turns every time she uses her basic. Two turn taunt on a basic, that's brilliant. Reading that alone makes me think she's going to be a fantastic addition to any rebel squad. Under scoundrels, she's going to gain stealth for one turn, which synergizes with her, ability, her unique ability that we're going to get into just a little bit later. Her special ability, Improved Strategy, deals an AoE attack that removes 50% turn meter and grants her potency up for one turn. Empire enemies are also stunned for one turn. The threat she opposes to Empire lineups in her kit is great, I think, uh, but I don't think we're going to see much use of that until we see some new Empire tunes come to the game, which we probably will in the near future, I imagine. The potency up she gets will actually help her land that TMR reduction um, and the stuns against Empires, but it's also going to play into a second unique. If we take a look at her first unique, Infiltrator, we can see that she's going to gain 100% crit chance and 50% crit damage when she's stealthed, which will be almost constantly when you run her under a scoundrel lead such as Kira. What's interesting to see here is that when she loses Taunt, she gains stealth for one turn. She's going to be a real pain in the ass to kill, just like she was in the show. You think you've gotten rid of her Taunt, and all of a sudden, she's stealth, so you can't finish her off. You've got rid of her Potency up, so you think that you can kill her permanently, but no, she's stealth. You have to get rid of her again. Her second unique, though, is where the real tasty stuff is. This is a Zeta ability, X-Rebel Shock Trooper. Now, she's going to gain critical hit immunity for two turns and 100% turn meter whenever an enemy Empire enemy is defeated. This is hard for non-Empires, so I'm guessing that's one turn of crit hit immunity and 50% TM. All the same, that's still fantastic. 50% turn meter whenever she kills an enemy. Or, well, it's not even her, it's anybody in the team uh, kills an enemy. She gains 50% TM and crit hit immunity. Crit hit immunity is great for a tank, as we've seen on characters like General Kenobi, uh, but this is just some other level stuff, especially when you look at that last bit of this ability. If she dies when she has potency up, she's going to revive at 50% of her max health, and she's going to regain potency up. So she's going to be constantly reviving unless you can land ability block or buff immunity under her, or if you kill her with a character such as... Um, uh, General Skywalker, or if you pass what's weapon tech onto a particular character, she's going to have to necessitate specific ways to kill her. So uh, imagine her under a CLS lead, say, with Raid Han, Chewie, and 3PO. 3PO will pass translation at three stacks. That's going to reduce the cooldown on her special ability, the, which is only a two turn cooldown anyway. Uh, so she'll be able to use her AoE every single turn, removing 50% turn meter off the entire enemy team. If there's any empires, they'll get stunned for one turn. If she kills anybody, she's going to gain 50% TM. So she's just going to constantly be AoEing, AoEing. Um, it's, it's, it's fantastic. She's also going to be gaining potency up whenever she AoEs. So if you do kill her, then she's going to revive at 50% hit points. I think she's going to be an absolute staple tank in CLS lineups. When it comes to modding, I would probably run her with two or three defense sets. If you go with two defense sets, I'll, I'll run her with a side of tenacity as well. Uh, I'd throw protection primaries up on the arrow, the circle, and the triangle to really make her beefy. And I'd put a tenacity primary on the cross. As far as her secondaries go, I would probably look to have... Uh, a smattering of, of speed and offense, um, just because I think in relics, that's where the most bang for your buck lands. 
Uh, that that mod set would probably make a nigh unkillable and hopefully lower the chances of you landing buff immunity or um, ability block on her. I really can't wait to see what her stats are like under relics and I want to know what her mastery is to see how she's going to operate under the new Galactic Legends Ray. All in all, I think this is a fantastic kit and I really can't wait to get her. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to see you in the next video where we're going to take a look at none other than Grief Karga. Thank <laughs> you.